Welcome, everyone. Um, do we know who the meeting facilitator for this week is? It's me. Ah, OK, great. I'm just going to give people a few more minutes to come on. It's a very small group so far. Hello. Hey, Jenny. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh -huh. So if you haven't already put yourself in the agenda um, to indicate that you've attended, please do that now. So just put the link to the meeting minutes in the chat. I also need two people to volunteer as scribes still. So if you're interested and willing to do that, please add yourself to the doc as well. I'll scribe, but I'm gonna to have to drop off early, so definitely need another. So a second scribe is critical. <laughs> So can anyone else who's here volunteer to be the second scribe, especially for the latter part of the meeting? Thank you, Ash. All right, so we should probably get started. So I think everybody is busy adding themselves to the attendance, but if you haven't yet, please do. Um, are we still going around to do stand-up for everyone to have a chance to say what's going on with them? My understanding is that policy hasn't officially changed yet, but there's okay. a desire to do so. But yeah, I saw is, some conversation to that effect. Yeah. But we're still going to do it today? Yeah, we'll still do it today. Uh, like uh, what Justin said, there's a conversation. I think we need to decide on that soon okay. to see who to go for. All right. Well, Justin, you're on the top of the attendance list. Do you want to give your update? Sure. Um, presented tough for graduation in the TOC meeting yesterday. Um, it had actually surprisingly many questions about Uptain related to that. Um, I'm also going to be giving a talk at a Kubernetes meetup in New York City about SIG security later this month. So uh, I don't yet really know what I'll say other than the sorts of things that were said during the intro and deep dive SIG security meetings um, at, at uh, the last big uh, CNCF event. Um, so if anyone has suggestions, feel free to reach out to me and I can try to work them into my talk. Sounds good. Brandon, you're next. Hi. Um, yeah, so I, I was just going through last week um, a bunch of issues and PRs. It seems like uh, I identified two of them, which seem like they're ready. Um, probably if we have some time today, we can discuss a little bit. Uh, maybe we can start merging them in. 
Uh, also, I opened a proposal to update the initial landing page. Uh, I want to get some feedback on um, what we think um, is important information. Like right now, the meeting times and meeting links are all buried behind on the member list. So it's a little hard to get to. So if we have time as well, I'd like to get some feedback on that. Okay, if you want to just add those items to the end of the agenda so we can hit them if we have time that it'll be easier to track that yeah. we want to be sure to talk about those. All right. Thank you. Bruce? Hi there. Yeah, my, my name is Bruce McAfee. I work at Trend Micro. Um, I am a uh, dev manager, so I run a couple of teams that do um, container security. One uh, for static you know, Docker image scanning and one for uh, container runtime protection. And uh, yeah, so Trend Micro is just interested in, you know, kind of getting, uh, getting involved with uh, CNCF a little more. And um, yeah, so we just like to know, you know, what initiatives are out there and, uh, and uh, yeah, contribute if we can. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm the next person and I don't have anything significant to update. Um, it's been a little bit since I've been able to attend and I'm in the process of changing my role so that I'll have more time to attend regularly. So it's uh, a little bit slow going, but hopefully soon that'll start to flip for me. Mark, you're up next. Hi everybody. Uh, nothing too much new here. I'm going to promote my, my talk. I'll put this into the chat. I'm going to be in uh, Washington unless my company talks me out of going to uh, uh, talk about DevSecOps and in particular the use of ontologies to support that. I only mention it in this context because I steal some good ideas from other people in this meeting. So that's it for me. Thank you. Martin, do you have an update? Uh, hello. Uh, well, I'm interested in, well, I don't have an update, but I want to bring two topics. Um, I, br I have issues about them. The first one is I, I didn't understand. Um, in the beginning, you mentioned that uh, you will do something in a different way, but it's not yet decided. Does that mean, uh, is that for the check-ins? Yeah, or so so there's been some discussion about whether we should still go around to everybody who's attending and, and do stand-up the way that we're doing right now. Okay, uh, yeah, that's one of the topics. Uh, the other one is um, I've, I've uh, shown interest before uh, in the assessment uh, into, uh, to participate in an assessment. I saw that um, in one PR, which, which is already merged, I am uh, as one of the volunteers for the Falco assessment. If there is any information for, uh, I don't know, deadlines or where, when are we going to start and so on, I will, it will be, interesting for me. Uh, I would, is that not available in the issue itself? Uh, I don't see any, I see on uh, to-do lists, but I don't see any, um, I don't know, deadlines or any okay. information. When are we going to start? I might even just, if I were you, add the comment to that effect to the issue to see yeah, if okay. the people who are following it have any information about that. I just wanted to use that opportunity if there is somebody who knows in person. Sure. I'll, uh, I'll take a look at it and uh, follow up with any additional information that I could get on that. Uh, this is JJ. Yep. Thank you. Right, and I think in general, we're, we're basically ready to start um, assuming, you know, but I, I think we're also still trying to get the full cadre of people from our end to do the assessment on our side. So um, I can prod and try to make that happen a little faster, but uh, those on the call that are interested should also uh, jump in. Did we get a go ahead uh, feedback from TOC about this yet? Uh, I think my understanding is, is that Sarah's reaching out to, um, to Liz and others, but when we were given an initial list of projects to look at, Falco was on it. So it would be, I think, very strange for them to say, here's the list of five projects we want you to look at. And then for us to come and say, okay, well, we're starting on the 
you know, a third project from that list and them to say, whoa, what's going on here? So I, I feel like um, it's, we're, we're very safe in going ahead and, and progressing. All right, yeah, sounds good. All right, JJ, you're next. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, I don't have much of an update. Uh, Six Security Day, I think we've got uh, we've got decent number of submissions, and we are going through the review of the talks. Um, so it should uh, should get announced soon. The CFP closed as of Monday, I think. So there's no more submissions left. Um, as far as uh, this topic is concerned, I just wanted to bring it to team's attention that. Uh, there has been some confusion in terms of uh, how the how we pick up projects for review, and uh, we are gonna we are seeking clarification with Joe and Liz uh, on that to ba basically have uh, cl clear guidelines in terms of like how we pick projects. Uh, mainly projects around like the ones that are in CNCF, it's pretty clear. The ones that are uh, coming into CNCF, should it go to TOC first before it comes to us, or uh, are we okay just picking it up or without uh, TOC asking us to? It's a question that uh, we want to get clarification on. That's for the rest of the team. Uh, and uh, yeah, and there is a, uh, I've worked with Howard on uh, trying to get the policy. Uh, working groups, artifacts into our uh, repo. So I'll work with them offline to basically merge all that doc in. So it'll be useful for the rest, rest of the team to be able to discover the, those docs in our repo. There's an existing PR that I'm working on uh, that I think Sarah commented on it. I'll be working on, working on, working on that, uh, which people are, uh, I'll be happy if people jump in and comment on that as well, if there is any comments on that. So that's about it from me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ash, you're next. Uh, so I'm working with uh, Justin, Robert, and Sarah on the review comments for the OPA assessment, and uh, we plan to get it in this Friday. So yeah, we've been working on those comments. And that's it. Okay, thank you. TK? I don't have anything new. Thanks. Okay. Amy? The next on the list is... Sorry, coming Amy. off mute. Hi, oh, hi. Yep. yep, just stepping in to be able like, you know, uh, watch over stuff here. I'm the program manager at CNCF, so that's why I don't say very much other than like, hi, hello, friends. <laughs> that's okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Good fun. Thank you. Robert? Hi, yes, uh, uh, participating in the OPA comments and helping close that out as best uh, I can help. And then uh, open the issue for starting the Falco assessment, uh, recognizing that we're still waiting on uh, guidance from TOC and whatnot, but uh, at least to have something to track status. Okay. That's the end of the attendance list in the document. So. If I didn't call your name, please add yourself to the doc. I linked to it in the chat. Does anybody else have an update that they would like to give? I had a quick question about the Falco assessment. Go ahead. Uh, so should we just add ourselves as reviewers or are there like a set number of reviewers already for each project? I I don't think there's a set number. If Justin's on the call or Brandon, I think you had opinion on kind of a target number. Yeah, we, we'd like there to be um, four-ish reviewers. And so if, if we had a situation where there's three who really know a project well and have done assessments before, we'd probably go ahead. Um, and if we have people that want to kind of learn and cut their teeth, then having five or maybe even six is sort of okay. But um, at least right now, we're looking at something on the order of four. Okay. All right. Do you count? Uh, do you count the leader of the assessment in this number? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, because uh, yeah. currently, I'm I, I 
I don't have a lot of experience with Falco specific, specifically, but I am in the assessment. Is that a problem or like I, I could uh, spend time to get in, get to know the project and that's why I'm asking for the startup of the assessment. But if that's a problem, I don't know. Uh, I'll speak from my perspective since um, I have the only uh, experience I had with Falco prior to, to reviewing the code. Uh, was just you know Sysdig uh, and in general you know just some kind of webinar exposure to it. So um, I'm I'm happy to have anyone who has the security background and is willing to spend you know a little bit of time coming up to speed on the project, either by uh, my methodology code review or by operationally installing and playing around with it, just to get to a bit of. That said, I'm I'm attending a Sysdig training event. Thursday in San Francisco, I'm happy to, to give a dump and, and I can contribute it here or contribute it somewhere offline uh, for those who want to review that material. Um, so that might be also a, a useful resource. That will be okay. awesome. Yeah, let's hold off on any further Falco questions because we do have an agenda item for it later. So if, if there's more that needs to be discussed, we can talk about it when we get to that. The next uh, item on the agenda is to do a check-in with any partner SIGs or working groups that are here today. So is anybody here from Kubernetes SIG off who would like to give an update? Or the policy working group? The security audit working group? Or the NIST big data working group? Nothing new from NIST. Okay. JJ, can you give a quick update on uh, policy? Sure. I think I did uh, early on in the call. I don't know. Uh, I think there is a PR uh, that's pending. Oh, sorry. I just went. Yeah. So there's a PR that's pending that uh, I'm reviewing. And then uh, I'm going to work with uh, Howard to merge all the artifacts that they have in a Google Doc into our repo so that it's discoverable by people. Um, so they have, they've done, uh, they, they've done some really good work in terms of producing a policy white paper. Uh, there is also um, compliance uh, tooling that they are trying to work on, which I think uh, would benefit a lot from some of us getting involved in it. So so that's the current state. And I'll keep you posted and watch out for issues on uh, GitHub. And there, there is a call today at four, I believe, four Pacific. Yeah. All right, anything else from SIGs or other working groups? Sounds like no. So the next thing is something that came in the last meeting, I think, about the subject matter expert page. So issue 115 discusses, discusses it, and it looks like we may need a volunteer to take the lead on it. I don't know if anybody else has more context for what in particular the discussion needs to be about today, but if anybody does. I wasn't at the last meeting, so I don't know what in particular needs to be followed up on. Just that it looks like it needs a volunteer. So I'm going to take that as nobody's quite sure uh, what's needed there. Maybe it's something that um, Sarah is doing. JJ, I don't know if you know, you also created the issue. Um, I am on the phone, so that's why I wasn't commenting much, but if you can uh, pass down the issue, then I'll comment on the issue after the call. If that's okay. okay. Uh, I just uh, pasted it in the chat. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Thank you. All right, the next item that's on the agenda is to follow up on some PRs. So the first one is number 246, which is yeah. Abby uh, use cases for the platform implementer persona. 
Yeah, so um, that was like one of the two PRs that I found, which seemed like um, they seem mostly completed. Um, mm -hmm. I think we just one additional set of eyes. Um, so one, the first one is for the. Actually, should, um, maybe I'll share my screen and then we can take a look at that. Okay. All right. Do you see my the issue? Yep. Okay. So this one was um, for the cloud platform uh, implemented persona. I think this um, is owned by Christian Kemper. I I'm, I don't think he's on the call today though. Mm, nope. I don't so, think so. Um, it looks good. I, I reviewed it. It looks good. Um, JJ, I was because you're the owner of the file. I think um, if you have any comments on it or if people on this call want to review it, um, I'm thinking that maybe we can look at trying to merge this soon because it's been open for a while and I don't think there's any additional uh, unresolved comments on this yet. So I'm just going to paste a link in the chat. So that people can add their review if they want. Yeah. So this was basically, um, I think the the this came from a discussion um, within Google and also within another a few organizations that there's this um, platform implementer which is really in charge of setting up all the um, cloud native platforms, and then each individual cluster is, uh, has its own operators. So. Um, so Christian did add one of these and also based on his feedback from speaking to a few internal folks at Google, I think. Um, it, it's pretty much um, similar to the rest of the document uh, with a focus on really creating the high level policies um, for every individual cluster. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm not, do we have documented the process for how things get approved and merged? Yeah. Um, I believe the process is um, like the LGTM and then the, also one of the owners of the file um, reviews it as well. So I think the owner of this file is JJ. So, um, yeah, I'll, yeah uh, I can take a look at it uh, after this call. But if uh, the general thing is, if there is enough reviews and we have addressed the comments on that, uh, I would just wait for a day and uh, this is good work. So I would just uh, push it, merge it. Uh, and when you're okay, let me know uh, if, if you expect comments from any specific person, then we can try to tag them and then see if we could get comments. But otherwise, I would just uh, uh, go ahead and merge it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll let you take a look through it and then maybe just just put a comment that you take a look at it and then we can merge it. Okay, so, I'll do that. So if you want to add any other comments on this, it's a good idea to look at it in the next day, it sounds like, before it gets merged. Yeah. Yep. I'll, I'll budget at the end of the week so we don't have to rush. Okay. Um, and the same for the other issue, 236? Yeah, this one is pretty much, um, this one has a few unresolved comments though. So, uh, but I think the author, I've tried to ping him once or twice, but he doesn't seem to be responding to that. Um, What's the author on the call I think today? it's Aaron, Aaron Zolman. I didn't see it on the attendee list. I don't think he's here. So yeah, I think the the general consensus the last time we discussed this is a lot of the changes are good, and I think we should keep it. Um, so I maybe the thing we should do now is we can um, probably merge this and then I'll I'll create a new PR from this um, with some of the changes. Yeah, we saw the changes and then follow up the discussion from that because I don't think that if um, if Aaron isn't 
that to modify the branch, I don't think we can actually make changes to it. Do you want to create a separate PR that's based off of this with the changes that you were suggesting for people to review since it looks like it's yeah. been kind of a while and Aaron hasn't come yeah, back to I'll, edit. I'll do that. I'll create a new, a new, a new PR and then we'll just take the discussion from there. JJ, is there a way to close the existing PR? I don't know if that's something uh, only. I, I think I can do that. Um, I have the triage role, so I, I can okay. I can do stuff with PRs. Yeah, that sounds good. It, I think it probably makes sense given the length of time. I don't know if anybody disagrees, please speak up. But given the amount of time that it's been and Aaron hasn't come back in to edit it, that we just copy it into another branch and make the edits that we want. Sounds good. And if you're unable to do that, you can just escalate to the chairs to go and close. I'm sure we can close. And then maybe it makes sense to just touch base again on this one at the next meeting so that if people want to provide feedback on the PR that you open, there's an opportunity for them to get that link at the meeting and add their comments. Rather than getting this one merged in the next couple of days. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. So I think that takes care of the follow-up that we need to do for PRs at this meeting, unless anybody else is aware of something that's worth discussing. All right, so the next item is feedback on the SIGs README. Um, yeah, that, that's me again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I, I was thinking about just reorganizing the review page. If you have any feedback, I was thinking the, the main things I was thinking about is to move the meeting times up and the, uh, provide the link to the, the meeting documents with the, meet, the meeting time. And also to add a new section for new members because we have the new addition for the, the new members page. So I think we can also add that in. Um, but I wonder I, if it, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, I wonder if it would help to have an index even. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Let me write that down. Um, so I created a, um, I created an issue. Let me put it in the doc. So if there's any feedback on this, we can um, do add it to the issue. It's issue 271. Okay. Yeah, that's all that I have for that. Ben, this is Dan. Uh, yeah, I, I created most of that README. Uh, yeah, uh, I wonder now that we're on such a regular cadence uh, and we have kind of a core um, meeting doc, how useful it is to maintain that list of um, meeting dates. You know, that, that as we were establishing ourselves and trying to line folks to our cadence, um, you know, I, I, I felt was really important. Uh, and, and it was, a, um, you know, one of the ways that I would signal, um, well, are we having a meeting? If we're not having a meeting, you know, let's go in a line there. Um, but now that we're, you know, fully realized CNTF uh, SIG, uh, you know, we would meet every week at this time and you know, these are the meeting notes uh, so that that section where we maintain um you know the history of our meetings may may not have um you know the same meaning now yeah i, I always look forward to your monday pr so at the, the funny meetings right <laughs> <laughs> there's also a way in markdown where you can make a collapsible section so oh, you could okay. have, if you, if you felt like there was any value nice. in having the links to individual meetings, you could make it collapsible. So at least it's not taking up so much of the readme. Nice. That's good yeah, but I, I, at this point, I, I, I actually question whether, whether it's, it's useful to anybody or useful to anybody that is going back and, uh, um, in, and trying to get a sense of whether we met or not on a particular date. Like yeah. I, I struggle to see a utility for, for that list of dates. Yeah, or I can also 
This is Amy. I'll step in for a moment here. It's sometimes Great. helpful to be able to find things like much further back, be it, say like, you know, um, three years from now, we might actually want some of this information. I can't come up with a reason exactly right now, but I also can't see a reason to be able to get rid of it if we already have it. Mm -hmm. which, which is why it's, it, 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 it stuck around. You know, I definitely agree that the utility of our archive minutes um, is something you know, I'll, I'll lay down on that, you know, defend that. Um, so, you know, that, that's the utility that that link, uh, you know, provides today is it links back to on this date, uh, here is the minutes associated with that. I think the question is how available does this need to be when you're trying to be able to find the current meeting minutes, correct? Right. Yep. Okay, then and I think my comments about like we should get rid of it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> right, and, and and I think we can we can we can you know uh, take care of most of that with you know what Brendan is proposing is like here's the meeting time and date and minutes go, and moving that up. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I agree with this. We don't need to to paste a link for every single meeting. It doesn't make sense. It just requires work. All right. So, so there's the, the issue that's linked in the meeting minutes. If you want to add more comments on that, if you have other ideas about a good way to organize it, please feel free to add your thoughts on that issue. And at some point, we'll turn that into a PR. The last item that we have on the agenda is about the Falco security assessment. So there's some conversation that started about that a little bit ago. If we wanna pick up or I'm not sure what specifically we wanna cover about that, but I'll leave that to the people who would like to talk about it. I, I don't have a particular, uh, I didn't put the agenda item on, but I'm happy to just brief. Uh, hasn't been much change from last week other than, as I noted, uh, we created a, an issue to track status. Um, and Chris, and, uh, or Chris Nova replied uh, that she is uh, in contact with the, the team to try to assess when they would be ready and propose a date to start, but don't have that date as of yet. Anybody else have anything that they want to talk about? Questions, thoughts? Yeah, I, I just wanted to, uh, to, to since we, uh, I, I caught it at the tail end of, of check-ins, uh, discussion around uh, prioritization and guidance from the TOC. Um, so, you know, at, at present, the guidance from the, our TOC representatives is, um, you know, keep on going, document uh your process and you know no objections so they're not blocking us um but we haven't uh you know yet fully ratified um you know the coordinated uh expression of uh you know how we manage and triage that um but you know steady state everyone's happy with that uh and you know the only sort of uh overarching guidance uh that we have there is uh you know preference to CNCF projects. So Dan, th this did come up in discussions with the Falco team and, and may be relevant to other project teams as we go forward. Uh, it was kind of the ask of whether the assessment was required by CNCF or, or the TOC. Um, and I guess the answer is currently no. Uh, do you have any visibility as to whether That's that correct. would change? Or is that the intent? Right. So I, I think we may be conflating uh, two different types of security assessments and how this, the uh, TOC is going to manage that. Right. Um, you know, there's uh, at a certain level, you know, a full compliance security review that uh, you know, projects have to go through. Um, you know, the assessment is. Um, is not a replacement for that. Um, though, 
um, you know, as we've uh, you know set it up, we do think that it is a you know, on ramp to that uh, that could be useful. Um, it's definitely not uh, established as a gate to that assessment. It's a um, you know we we uh, have presented it um, as an accelerant as a help, uh, and we bring our subject matter expertise to uh, you know help ensure that we are uh, supporting a secure. Um, cloud native ecosystem. Great, thanks for the clarification. I think we've kind of reached the end of the agenda unless anybody else has an item that they wanted to talk about today. Is there anything else that we should cover today? Well, I, I bring this up before and I hope that I am not annoying or something, uh, but um, I saw that uh, the I saw that I'm in uh, as a security reviewer of Falco. I, I'm accepted as a security reviewer uh, from one of the PRs, um, which was merge, merged. And in this PR, uh, the idea of uh, observer or internal role was removed. Um, you know, removed. It's hard to say, but we dis we discussed that it's a useful thing to have. And I wanted to ask, maybe broadly again, uh, do you guys think this is uh, this is a good idea to have such a role, and if 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 that, can we discuss this a little more, or can we at least um, speak about it, or maybe you think that we don't have a, a good uh, security assessment um, workflow that uh, so maybe it's hard to have uh, to have um, a good doc documentation about this right now. So I think I think we have an issue open where we are discussing that, right? Um, which one was that? Yeah, there is uh, two hundred fifty-six. But uh, so I just wanted to ask because there are two or three people who I saw that there were their reactions. I wanted to ask maybe Dan or somebody from the chairs or and somebody who is somebody else besides the people who comment on the issue. Uh, let me understand the question a little bit. Like, are you, uh, is it to create the, create an extra role? Sorry, I didn't catch the question. Uh, the question, the question is that there is no, um, no explanation. Do we have something like an internal role? Do we have, do we expect the people in the security assessments to be, um, uh, 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 security engineers with a lot of experience, or uh, is there an, the idea that uh, there will be somebody who will, uh, who will be an intern, basically, in a security assessment? Yeah, so I, I think we have the, so um, I assume that you, you're talking about something that's similar to the guide that we have for security assessment, right? Well, basically, it's a, a simple document or a simple section in, in the, one of the documents explaining what is expected from an intern in the security test. Will be, this will be great. I don't, because I don't know what, uh, do we have such a role? And if so, what are the expectations? So, role. Role clarification itself, uh, we are working through to create a little bit more clarity, create a little bit more roles, uh, considering the amount of work that's coming our way. Uh, it'll be useful to partition work. So the short answer to that is it's a work in progress. So I'd be happy to hear your inputs and feedback in terms of how to uh, structure that. And we'd be happy to Elaborate on that, but uh, uh, if there isn't already an issue, I'd open an issue. I'll open an issue to say what we are thinking about in terms of roles uh, between uh, Dan, Sarah, and myself. I'll take that as a 
there is already an open issue. I just want, okay, if there is a discussion which is maybe outside of the Slack channel or somewhere, I will be glad to participate. Yeah, maybe. okay. Let me pull you in into, uh, so we haven't had outside discussion yet, but it is an ongoing discussion on that issue itself. Uh, but uh, let's, yeah, let's collaborate on that to create, uh, create a little bit more clarity on that role. I'd be happy to take uh, help on that. Thank you. So there is in the assessments directory in the repository. So in the, in the readme in that directory, there's a process that talks about each security assessment having a project lead yeah. and security reviewers and other members of the SIG participating and security reviewers links to another document that defines that role and the required qualifications. So that may be a useful resource too. Which isn't to say that that's a static document. I think, yeah. you know, if, if there's things that merit revising in that, that's something that the group would be open to. Yeah. If the GitHub issues are the right way to work through that. M Martin, this is Dan. Uh, you know, th there's, there's something that you know, you may be encountering here where the team, the assessment team is still getting up to speed and sort of hitting its rhythm and, you know, hasn't sort of gotten to optimal state. Um, having, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, 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 the delta between an observer and an intern, for me as an engineering manager is vast. Uh, an observer is an individual that is going to watch, they're going to learn, and they're going to be autonomous. Uh, an intern is someone who um, is, uh, you know, basically apprenticing to learn an effort. And um, if you have an intern or, or someone who is, uh, you know, coming and joining and learning the system, um, then, uh, you know, the, the, the core working team um, you know, has to make a commitment to ensure that individual is, um, you know, doing effective work and they have to, you know, kind of double their efforts, you know, doing the assessment, working through that and making sure that the uh, new individual is uh, getting up to, to speed. Um, so, uh, you know, the, conflating those two concepts may uh, be slowing down the, you know, this discussion. It would be useful to uh, under, to understand maybe and to clarify what do we expect more uh, do we expect observers or interns? So yeah, that, that's a, that's a big question, and uh, we can comment that on the on the issue on the existing issue. Great, I, I think there's more going to be more willingness right now to um, to. Uh, embrace observers and uh, you know someone who, who's going to participate, but that that is also uh, you know starting with that observer state uh, could be a great way to uh, you know then get in, in, invited uh, to participate and have someone you know take on a, a, a mentorship capacity to ensure that the uh, new participant is uh, able to be be effective in, in learning. I agree. Are there any things that we should also talk about related to this recent topic, or do we have any other topics that we want to talk about before we get off the call? I want to talk about how to oh, sorry. Go ahead. I have a closing statement. Yes, TK. Um, I, I just have a very basic question on this. I've been looking at this. And hearing all these comments and analysis and all those things, the question that I have in my mind is: um, at the end of the security assessment uh, complete completion, rather, um, what would they do with that? What what is the actual uh, benefit out of that thing, and what's the motivation for them to go through this? I 
I don't I didn't mean to silence everybody by <laughs> but I'm just basically asking just you know let's say I'm an ABC company and I'm working on some security product and I do have a serious interest to the uh, to be compliant with the native uh, you know, cloud native uh, applications as such and so forth. So I go through this and uh, is there a certificate that are going to be issued that is going to be, you know, uh, recognizable in the industry community in some ways or is that some sort of a, um, uh, you know, parametric measure, for example, that, okay, well, if you pass this one, then you go to the next stage and then you go to the next stage and so forth. Um, it, I mean, it's not clear to me exactly against what we are assessing this. So I'm just noticing that Justin isn't on the call anymore, TK. I feel like he probably is maybe the person who is best suited to respond to this question. Uh, so it might be worth waiting till next week to raise it when he's on the call because he's officially the facilitator for these security assessments. Okay. Um, it, it might be that there's not a, much of an answer right now because he's not here and neither is Justin Cormack who's listed as the um, one of the security reviewers. So we just may not have the expertise on this call to answer well. Yeah, and, and I, I just you know, touch on the high level. It's uh, you know, we're uh, you know serving uh, you know, the CNCF um, that sort of official capacity. We're, we're a um, you know an expertise body uh, and not a issuing body or an entity that that um, you know can uh, back and validate things at a certain level. Um, so uh, the CNCF does have some programs that it, it, it uh, is able to, um, you know, provide attestation about, uh, you know, the state of, uh, you know, its projects uh, and, um, you know, anything at the level of certification, uh, you know, producing a document or, um, you know, having an outcome in that, that uh, capacity um, would have to be through uh, the, the, C, the CNCF. And what is, that, what is that CNCF mechanism? So if I want to get a certificate for my project, what is that mechanism? Um, oh God, the, um, the gold silver status of the projects, right? You, I mean, you, you can become a member of the, the CNCF with your project. Um, so, uh, you know, this is uh, project based and not corporate based. And um, I don't know that uh, beyond Kubernetes certification, um, right? This is the Kubernetes certification project um, that the CNCF has uh, developed any uh, other um, certification um and attestation uh products and, so, so go ahead yeah. oh i'm sorry no, i just for that was a good question but on the follow-up what i was thinking is so that means there was no actual agreement through our toc for example with the cncf that um, our security assessment will be somehow linked with those certification process that cnc follows at this point I mean, we are doing these things on our own and the CNCF has not quite uh, either blessed us or no, uh, no, no uh, coordination. It's just that, that um, additional sort of business step that, uh, you know, you're, you're reaching for, um, I don't think is, is something that uh, this SIG will ever be, um, be doing. Uh, and that that would be a program of the CNCF. 
Okay, I, I would just, but I, I would just say that I think it's important to make that clear because as folks go through the process or choose not to go through the process, because I mean, OPA just went through the process. I'm not sure if they were aware that, that there was no expectation that the assessment was not a, a, a requirement of the CNCF or was going to be required at some point. And then similarly, Falco, like I said, has asked similar questions. So I certainly don't want to mislead anyone um, if, if they're asking if it's going to be required, or what's, what's the benefit to them of doing it? I don't, I don't, I'm not hearing that there is a particular benefit to doing it. Oh, I'm, I'm not asserting that at all. Uh, but I'm not saying that, uh, what I'm saying is that, that we're not going to be, uh, providing a security at the station, um, you know, from a working group. But we do re give a report to the TOC, correct? Because that's what there, there's a report. There's a guidance. There's an advisory. Uh, but an attestation and an official seal and, a, and, a, and an approval—that's that, something that um, you know a, a working group is um, you know not uh, authorized even to uh, to provide. That's going to be you know tied to programs that uh, um, the uh, CNCF provides. But um, then, wouldn't you agree that at least we being as a authorized working group on the security under CNCF, we should be aiming for, or at some point, I don't know when, we should be aiming for to become some sort of a accreditation type of body that which either endorses certain guidelines or provides some sort of a certification as such on behalf of CNCF so that they, there is motivation in the industry to participate in this type of assessment process or to be evaluated through our uh, process. The, the, the first I'm, part, I'm, yes. The, the first part of like uh, ratifying the, uh, the criteria, yes. Um, you know, becoming a, uh, an entity that, um, you know, does that work, that, that's work. That's, you know, I, and, and I, uh, you know, fundamentally believe that individuals participating in that should get compensated for that work. Uh, and that we should not have that be, uh, you know, a, a product of, um, you know, an expert forum like this. You're absolutely right. Actually, the last part that you just made the comment, that was actually on my mind. I was wondering about even on this security assessment, 80 hours, uh, 40 hours, whatever, for the lead or the assessors and such, you know, how are that being motivated and who would well, be I, providing those? Just, I'd like to speak to that because if someone yeah. who volunteered without any expectation of compensation to do a security lead, knowing that it would require, I mean, having paid for security reviews in the past, um, having been compensated for security reviews in the past, knowing the amount of work soberly involved, I, I felt that it was an important contribution to the open source community. So my expectation was m far more motivated around putting forth a, a process that was part of the CNCF uh, community as securing the infrastructure and the, and the projects that CNCF puts their name behind, that the community puts their faith in based on that open source model. So open source, not just being code, but open source being process, being, being uh, confidence, being due diligence, et cetera. Whereas today, yes, I can, I can take my commercial product and I can go hire a, a firm to do code reviews and security design reviews or to write code or to review code, et cetera. But I can also choose open source and I can choose to a community that vets that open source. So I, my, my expectation was that the assessment work we are doing, if not a, you know, a seal of approval or a, you know, a tangible certificate was at least going to mature into a CNCF process that would give the community reasonable expectation that just the project had been reviewed by school experts. And That's right. The community that, yes. consumed that information 
on their own as educated users, whether that was sufficient and, and they required some other code review by commercial editor, or if that was enough for them to start using the, the project. Now that's, that's a good point, but I think the demarcation line over there is the, on the open source, you may not necessarily have a serious commitment to take some responsibility of endorsing something on behalf of certain um, thing. I could be wrong, but I think there is, you know, without being compensated, a volunteer probably may not be in that position to make that kind of commitment. I mean, I mean, kudos to you and, and many others. You know, I have volunteered also myself and many things, but I, I kind of tend to feel that it is difficult to enforce a certain time commitment or an effort commitment with a um, specific hard date to get something done um, on, on those type of things. But it's True. a very good noble effort. There is no question about it. I'm not taking any credits away from the folks that are want to do it and also participate. I'm just wondering what we should be doing in here. I think what I'm hearing from Dan is that um, we don't have a, we are not making commitment, but we're encouraging, I guess, to- We're supporting open source. So okay. like these are uh, open, if we can provide an open source assurance, we are providing uh, support and guidance uh, on the required journey and we're you know, working now with the, the TOC to uh, you know, define and structure better those expectations. Um, you know, and the, um, the full uh, CNCF products have uh, certain security requirements. Those who have gone through that process have seen that, um, and, and especially the, the triangulations that, of individuals that are in our community, uh, who happen to also be security experts, um, you know, they understand that, that the, the, you know, uh, commercial security assessment and the uh, ecosystem participation and involvement that is intrinsic and open source, um, you know, don't necessarily overlap. And, you know, I see the effort that we're putting in place, uh, you know, serving that gap that is, open source and supporting a uh, secure by default community uh, and helping ensure that those individuals, um, you know, have actually uh, vetted, understand what the challenges are and understand, uh, you know, what, that they're connecting into an ecosystem uh, and are not like most commercial uh, efforts, you know, a isolated island. But wouldn't it be easier, though, to, as an open source community, as you said, uh, to establish or create among us uh, a, a set of clear guidelines for the people to be compliant and then living up to them how they assess themselves against that? So that's really... In my thinking, I, I, feel like, that's what, I feel that's what we're working towards. Uh, you know, since this is um, you know an evolving ecosystem, I don't know that that um, is well defined. And as we've collaborated with other more institutional bodies, um, you know, I, that that um, personal assessment has only been reinforced. And you know, and that goes back to my defense uh, work in the early two uh, thousands. So, so Tika, I would compare this to, the, say, the CII initiative. So they, they publish a, a set of guidelines for their badging program, bronze, silver, gold. And it's completely voluntary for the projects to fill things out um, and, and submit, you know, whether they're in compliance or not. Um, and whereas I see the assessment process here is taking that one step further to have an independent body review information submitted by the project and then actually check, is, is that information accurate? Is it correct? Was it complete? Just, just as a, a checksum to that, um, on a couple of the projects that had submitted CII submissions, I just did a naive cross-check to what they had submitted. And for the most part, everything was fine. But I found some omissions, things that were submitted that weren't actually present by, by accident. 
or biomission and, and some things that were in fact incorrect. So I think self-assessment is, is, and having a guideline like the CII has is a useful prerequisite, but I think having an active assessment adds value above and beyond that. And whether that's compensated or volunteer or, or not, I think it, for it to have any benefit, and I'm, I'm speaking in the, ben- the kind of the practical benefit, Dan, of, you know, a project has limited cycles. Uh, uh, there may be a commercial entity behind it. There may be project manager behind it. They've got to make a time to say, do we allocate resources to this thing or not? And if, if they don't have a concrete connection to the CNCF to do this thing, it might be a theoretical value in the security sense, but is it a practical value? If they then also have to go through some other CNCF pro- process that's somewhat orthogonal to this. That, that's, that's all I, that's data points I'm getting from actual conversation. Um, I'll just, I'll just submit that to the, to the group. And, you know, I think it's an important discussion to, to carry forward. True. And I, I think we're reaching to the end, obviously, just quickly though. And whenever you do something as an independent body, you, it's not a casual thing. So I think there is a responsibility of liability as well. I mean, you take a certain kind of responsibility to stand behind that statement of assessment. And, and I, it's not clear to me uh, how we are doing it. That's all. Agreed. Hmm. And I think that that is, you know, in part, uh, you know, also driving efforts like the subject matter expert uh, initiative where we're, you know, establishing some of that authority, right? Or it sounds like yeah. we could maybe continue this at the next meeting. It sounds like there's a lot of stuff to talk about here, um, but we are past time now. So thank you everybody for joining today. And I don't know if you had, you. you said you had a closing comment you wanted to say. Did oh, I just want? wanted to thank you, Jerry. Great to see oh. you and uh, uh, great job facilitating today. Thank Thanks, Judy. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks everybody. Plus, See you plus, next time. Plus one to Dan's comment. Yeah, thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.